Good morning, church. We are so glad that you could join us online this morning. My name is Dana Kennard, the student minister of Hillsborough Christian Church. You know, it's times like these where I am so thankful for the technology that God has blessed us with to do service online like this, but also because our students are trying not to go crazy being home all the time. But with the technology that we have, we are still able to have youth group on Wednesday nights with online video chat where we can all hear and see each other at the same time. You know, it's been a little bit of a challenge getting all the right gadgets in place to make it happen, but it has definitely been well worth it because we are and want to continue to be a church that helps people find and follow Jesus even in the midst of crisis. As we move on with our service, we want to encourage you, check out the links in the navigation bar, especially if you have kids. Check out the kids' content. There's a lot of great stuff in there please feel free to share any of the resources that you find. Again, we are so glad that you are here. As we move into a time of worship, whether you're in a suit and tie to stay consistent or whatever you wear on a Sunday morning, and even if you're in your PJs this morning, we encourage you to prepare your hearts as we worship our God who is good all the time.
it's good to just be able to worship with you this morning and to sing out. We're going to continue now with, with another song. Um, we're in this time, in this season of, of staying at home. We're just stuck at home and the uh, kids are around. I don't know if you can see him back there, but, um, but I, I feel like we're in this place where we need to just depend on God in prayer. And there are so many things that are, are unknown here. And I just encourage you as you sit at your house, watching this service, just depend on God in prayer. Take times to devote to him in prayer in this time. I don't know if you've been running from prayer, if you've been hiding from that, or, or maybe you're deep in prayer. But let's be a people of prayer. Dana said a little earlier that we want to help people find and follow Jesus. And we're going to continue to do that in this time of trial. But we're not going to do that without prayer. We're not going to do that without seeking God, without seeking the one who, who we can depend on, who has everything in control, who has these things in his hands. Let's put away distractions today. Let's submit to our God. Let's bow to him. And let's sing this out. Let's sing to him. Let's think about this time as an opportunity for prayer. Let's, let's sing. Yeah. 
me shall remain I will rejoice, I will declare God is my victory and He is So I will bring praise, I will bring praise No weapon formed against me shall remain I will rejoice, I will declare God is my victory for worshiping with us this morning. Church, we're going to move into a time of communion. And we're just going to remember Christ today. We're going to remember him together for what he did on the cross. See, this is just a this is a celebration of Christ's burial and resurrection from the grave. Now he's seated on high, he's alive. He was victorious over death. And now we get to celebrate that. So just take a few moments as we continue in our service to think about what Christ has done in your life, the way that he went to the cross for you, the way that he died for you, and the way that he's gonna raise you when he comes again. Let's just continue to remember remember this and, and take advantage of this time that we get to meditate on him. Let's just have a conversation with God today. Just take a little bit of time to take the bread and the juice that we've prepared ahead of time and just show him our devotion through this time. He is our God and he is our king. Let's take a few moments now. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna do offering now and feel free to, to give online through hillsboroughchristianchurch.com slash give or you can click the link in the navigation bar up there. Let's just take this time to uh, devote to, to God. We also want to show you a video from one of our strategic partners, which is High Hill Christian Camp. If you would uh, just watch the screen to show you this video and uh, check it out. The most impactful thing I learned this week is that God forgives you even when you do the wrongest things and the worst things that you could possibly do. And you can always just resort back to God. And what I'm probably going to do when I get home is have more quiet time 
and pray more so I can just, you know, be there with God and, you know, yeah. The most impactful thing that I've learned this week is that you need to be vulnerable for God to mold you into what He needs you to do. When I get home, I want to be on my phone less and help my mom out more and be more active at home. The most impactful thing that I've learned this week was just about my other friends and just hearing other people's testimonies and backgrounds. And I can apply that to my own life and help um, help me with my own spiritual growth. The most impactful thing I think I've learned is, I guess, like more about Jesus because my, my family doesn't really take me to church, so I only get, really get to do this once a year and I learn a lot from it. The most impactful thing for me today was that I learned that Jesus can shape my heart. I go. I go to a school that has like a lot of different, like a lot of different like religions in it, so I guess I can like spread the word of Jesus around and like try to tell people more about it. The most impactful thing I learned this week was about friendship and to choose the right friends. When I get home, I'm gonna tell people, reach out for them, so they can learn more about Jesus. The most impactful thing I learned this week was that Jesus is always there for me, thick and thin, and even in the hard times. What I've learned is to not jump into the fire and don't do what the frog did. When I get home, I'm going to say to all my friends, if they ask me where I've been, I'm going to tell them, I've been at High Hill Camp, you should really go, and it's the most great thing, and I'm going to recite everything I learned in uh, High Hill Camp. The most impactful thing I learned this week was that no matter how many times your heart is broken, God will always forgive you. When I get back home, I want to work at my church to show people. When I get home, I want to show others how to pray and learn about Jesus. When I get home, I want to think about my friends more wisely when going into sixth grade. When I get home, I'm going to be searching for more Christians in my school so they can more, so I can be better impacted and have good influence around me. The most impactful thing I learned this week is how to spend quality time with God. The most impactful thing I learned this week was that God could shape my life in many ways. When I get home, I want to reach out to people at school to read the Bible more. When I get home, I want to work on spending more time with God. Hello Church, we hope you're doing well. Uh, we're, we're really excited to be able to continue to connect with you in, in this way, and uh, we just want to let you know that we miss you. Uh, we're, we're just kind of continuing to, to go forward in our series on prayer, and, and I, I just want to share a couple of things with you just that we've been talking about over the, the last couple of weeks. Really, one of those is just that in prayer, we want to recognize that we can have a humble confidence in approaching God because He actually wants to hear from us. I think that's so important for us to, to know, and some of us may not feel like we're very good at, at prayer, but, but I just want to encourage you, when, when we're not good at something, we practice it, and, and we ask for help. You see, prayer isn't something that, that God wants from us, it's something that He really wants for us, and, and, and we really want to make sure that you know that. Uh, also, we, we want to know that during difficult circumstances, there are certainly things that we want to pray, like, God, just make it clear, or, or God, give me some relief, but, but maybe there are some better things that we could be praying. And again, things like, help me to trust in you, help me to grow, and God, help me to make a difference for your name's sake and for your kingdom during this time. And we hope that, that you find the, the strength, really, and the confidence to begin praying some of those things. I also just want to encourage you to 
and just be praying consistently, God, that you would restore my heart, that you would help guide me in, in a way that will, will make your path clear and, and help me to follow it. There are some things I want to share with you that, that are going to be on the YouVersion uh, Bible app in the, in the notes, and, and so I just would encourage you to, to check that out, but I, I, want, I want you to see uh, what this says. It, it, it starts off this way. This is just some, some things that prayer is not. It says prayer is not, uh, is not magic. We can't just summon God as though he were some kind of genie, as, as if he's you know, here to, to serve us. That's, that's just not how it works. We, we have to have uh, a regard for who God is. Uh, also, prayer does not make demands. Although we can make requests, we, we can't make demands from God. He's the, he's the maker and creator of, of the universe, and, and he won't uh, be fulfilling our demands, but he does want us to present requests. I also would tell you that, that prayer is for our benefit and not for God's. Uh, we need a relationship with him that's available through Jesus because of what Jesus has done for us on a cross. We can't earn a good standing with God, but, but because of what God has done by sending his only son, Jesus, we, we can have a meaningful relationship with him. And, and really, a lot of that is powered through prayer. I also want you to know that prayer is not a guarantee against suffering. I want you to hear these, these uh, two scriptures. In this world, you will have trouble. That's from John uh, 16, 33. It, it's, it's just a statement that, that while we're here, things are going to be difficult. And, and just praying or, or being connected to the Lord isn't going to take that away. Also listen to, to this. It says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. That's from 1 Peter 4, uh, verses 12 and 13. You see, suffering isn't something that's just eliminated by prayer. We need to, we need to understand that. And finally, prayer is not an opportunity for us to, to show off. It's not a, an opportunity for us to, to really gain attention. Really, it should be something that helps us to, to focus on who God is. In, in a lot of ways, it's, it's us pouring out our hearts to the Lord. And so we're going to be taking a look at that and, and, and I just want you to understand some, some things. Prayer really does make a difference. There's so many places in, in Scripture that we see that. And, and part of you can see that with, with Joshua. He's praying in, in Joshua chapter 10. And it says, the sun stands still. It, it, it stops. The moon stays in place. I'd encourage you to, to check out that, that chapter and to, and to see the way that, that God responds there's a, a judgment that's happening on the people who have lived in the promised land. And God is faithful to fulfill his promises. But you need to know that, that prayer is powerful and it makes a difference. Elijah knew this. He, he prays and it doesn't rain for years. I, I want you to know, even James will, will tell us in, uh, in, in his epistle that, that the, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We need to know that, that prayer makes a difference. We're not wasting our time, and this isn't something that's just for, uh, for us to do for God like it's some duty. I, I, wanna, I want you to know that God wants to give us good things, and I, and I think that's something that we understand. We want good things. I don't, I don't know if, if anybody doesn't want good things, but listen to what this says. This is from Matthew 7, uh, verses 7 through 11. It starts this way. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. There's this process for us to ask, and to seek, and to knock, and it's something for, for everyone. We all, should be, we all should be seeking not the stuff that we want, but we should be seeking the Lord. We should be coming before him. And, and, and listen to, to how Jesus kind of conveys this to something that's on, on our level in a way that we would understand. He continues, he says, Which of you, if your son asked for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asked for a fish, will give him a snake? You see, if... 
if your son is asking you for, for something, a, a, a good gift, why would you ever think to give him something cruel? Why would you ever want to give him something that wouldn't be good for him? You see, God wants good things for us. And it continues like this. It says, if you then, though you are evil, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And I want to tell you, I want good gifts. I don't know if you remember, maybe uh, if it's been a long time since you were a child at, at, at Christmas or for my birthday or things like that, I wanted good gifts. Even, even now, there are still things that I want. I, I still want good gifts. And good gifts are, are often meaningful. They're, they're often very intentional. And there was, a, there was a sermon that I shared that I, I like chocolate-covered pretzels. I even was very specific. I, I like the, the rolled gold milk chocolate-covered pretzels. Um, and, or actually, sorry, not even the rolled gold. Man, I, I told him myself. Um, no, the flips. Flips are better than rolled gold. Let's, let's just be honest. Um, but, but here's the thing. Somebody gave me some of those pretzels. It was a good, thoughtful gift. I like chocolate chip cookies with, with only like one or two chocolate chips in the cookie. And there are times that my daughter will, will, will give me that. But, but whether it's pretzels and, and, and chocolate chip cookies with almost no chips, or, or whether it's cash or cars or jobs, God does want to give us good things, but we need, to, we need to begin asking ourselves, what is it that we're asking for? Sometimes, sometimes we don't receive, James tells us, because we don't ask. And, and we need to make sure that we're asking God for, for good things. But sometimes we, we don't receive for another reason. Listen to, to how James continues that thought. This is James chapter 4, uh, verse 3. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. See, there are two questions we, we need to kind of wrestle through. Why are we asking? There was a, a time when I was in uh, Oklahoma in I was teaching children's church, and, and I was asking the kids what they wanted for Christmas. What, what gifts did they want to receive? And, and they, you know, were kind of going through the, the typical things that you might think kids would ask for. And one kid had even asked for something big. He asked for a, an ATV. And then his brother, it was his younger brother, said, I don't want an ATV. I just want a, I just want a tractor for my dad. And I thought, man, that is so cool. Like, of, of, all the, of all the kids who had responded, he was the only one who had asked for something for someone else. And, and as I was beginning to, to say that, his brother says, no, 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 no. He, he doesn't just want a tractor for dad. He just likes to ride on the tractor that dad lets him ride on. And so it, it was still this, sometimes, a selfish motive. Sometimes our motives look good, but, but they're not necessarily. I know a guy who found out that someone had inherited uh, a considerable amount of, of money and property, and, uh, and, and part of it was this incredibly large yacht. And, and he had this boldness to, to go over to, uh, to this guy's house where uh, he had just inherited all this, and he said, I, I, want, I want to ask you to donate your yacht. And the guy said, what are you doing? Are, are you crazy? Are you serious? That's a multi-million dollar yacht. And he said, I know, but I, I've just been praying, and, and I feel like that you know, God gave me the boldness to come over and to ask you. You see, what, what he wanted to do was uh, give, this, give this yacht to uh, a ministry that was operating down in Costa Rica. And they wanted to use this yacht to, to help reach kids for Jesus. It was about a week later that the guy called him and said, you need to come and get your boat because Jesus won't leave me alone. I want to tell you, it, it matters what you're asking for, and it matters why you're asking for it. Whether it's a tractor for your dad or it's a yacht for ministry, I just would encourage you to think through, why is it that I'm asking for the things I'm asking for? God does want to give us good things, but he wants to give us good things for our benefit. Listen to, to the certainty that, that we have, and, and, and we want to understand what we mean by certainty. This is First John uh, 5, this is verses 13 through 15. It says this, I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know uh, you have eternal life. 
And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our request, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. So there are a couple of things that, that we can see here in the scripture. One, he does not struggle to hear us. God hears us clearly. He also knows our motives. He knows what's on our heart. Uh, he, he, he's able to pick up every word and every intention. He, he knows all of those things. But he only wants what's best for us. God doesn't want to provide something for us that, that would harm us or that would lead us in, in the wrong direction. He wants what's best for us all the time. And, and, and I want you to know that part of what we're talking about here in prayer as we present requests, it, it's not just a, a, a thing where we're just constantly asking for something because God wants to provide good things. I, I'm just constantly asking God for good things. But it's pursuing his presence. Listen to the, the difference that, that we see here in, in Psalm 37, uh, verses 3 through, through 6. It says this, Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn, and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. And so part, when we're praying, part of what we need to, to be praying for is what we see, those elements that are present there. God, help me to trust. Help me to delight, to delight in you and, and, and help me to, to be committed to you. And, and in part, even in, even in good things, there can be a scary uh, ulterior motive that can build up. We, we might even pray something like, God, help me to make a big difference in this world for your name's sake. And, and there could be people, whether they're in ministry or, or, or otherwise, that they want to make a big difference, and, and part of their motivation is they love the Lord, but part of their motivation is that they want attention. We've got to be so careful with that. If we want to change the world, we, we might need to be thinking about changing ourselves. Actually, Leo Tolstoy says it this way, everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing themselves. What does it look like for us to say, okay, God, if you're going to make a difference in this world, and if I'm going to be praying that you make a difference in this world, maybe I need to make sure that you're making a difference in me. Uh, here's, here's a show that I used to watch a long time ago. It was called Overhauling, and there's a guy named Chip Foose who's, uh, who's just this incredible uh, car restoration expert. And, and the premise of the show kind of goes like this. There's, there's somebody, and they call them the, the Mark, and, and, and they're kind of fooled by what's going on here. They, they pretend that their car has been stolen, and, and during the, the week, they, they kind of have this frustrating uh, you know, process by which they're, they're trying to get the car recovered. They're trying to find out where it is. And, and meanwhile, the, the whole process that's going on is that, that their car is being overhauled. It, it's just a complete transformation, so, so drastic that, that it's like you don't even hardly recognize that it was the same car. It, it's, it's such a fantastic transformation. I, I want you to know that this total car transformation, this, this happens without the person even knowing. They, they, they have no part in it. I want you to know that, that when we pray that God would make a difference in our life, when, when we pray that, that something would, would happen, that he would work on us, that it doesn't happen without our input. It, it doesn't happen without us uh, actually doing something. And, and for some of us, we, we might be in that place where we're praying for something that seems simple. Like, God, would you, would you help my wife just to be a little more patient with me because I leave my socks or underwear on the floor? And, and would you just, just help her to, I don't know, maybe to chill out? And, and, and while you're praying that, it's, it's not that God wants your wife to be more patient. It's that he wants you to be more aware. Maybe that you would pick up your stuff. Maybe that you would be a little more compassionate and caring and considerate. You see, the situation might come out in a better way. Well, what does it look like for us to say, God, change me? I want you to know that it's a, it's a difficult thing to pray, and it can be scary, because I want you to know that a, a car transformation or a car restoration, it, it's not personally painful. It, it might cost you something, but, but personal growth and transformation can be difficult. But I want you to know it's eternally impactful. 
You, you need to know that, that when we pray and ask God to, to move and to work in our lives, it, it will really make a difference. And, and although it may be painful, it may be a painful process and it may happen over time, I want you to know that it's worth it. So part of the question of, of what we need to know is how do I bear fruit and what does that look like? Bearing fruit is, is part of what we recognize in Scripture as the Spirit's work in our life. It's, it's God's working through His Spirit to, to change us and to, to make a difference in us. And, and part of we want to know how do I allow the, the Spirit to work in me and through me and, and on me? Uh, listen to, to what Jesus says. This is in John 15. Starting in verse 1, it says this, I am the true grapevine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. You see, there's this process that we understand in gardening that if something's not growing, if it's not producing what we want it to, we, we prune it. We, we literally will take shears and we'll sever that part of the branch. It says this, you have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Part of what we need to know is that we, we can't do anything of eternal significance unless we remain in Christ, unless we abide in Him. It's, it's this intentional pursuing Him and, and staying connected to Him. And if we're going to stay connected to Him, if we want to bear much fruit, there's going to be some pruning that happens. Pruning might be painful, but, but it's beneficial for us. So, so maybe we would need to ask, what are some things that need pruning in my life? Uh, I want you to hear how, how this section concludes, though. It says this, Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. Listen, that's, that's not what we want our life to be like. We, we don't want what we do to, to be useless, we want it to be effective. And if we want to be effective, if, if we really want to remain in Christ, then, then in part we need to help in that process of what are some things that, that really we would invite the Lord to, to prune to, to make a difference in our life. But, but here's how it concludes. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I want you to know, and, and, and I'm sure you know this, change is hard, and, and especially at first. If you're in a place where, where you've been trying to figure out what does it look like to, to, to get in shape again, then, then you're going to know that, that there are a couple of elements that are really necessary for that. I, I really need to eat well. And, and, and I don't know if you've ever kind of made that transition. Sometimes food that's good for you just doesn't seem to taste as good. It, there's this process that happens within you that, that over time it, it actually changes your taste buds and it changes the way that you actually crave something. During soccer season, many of you will, will know this, I, I wasn't allowed to drink soda. And, and I really like Coke, especially from McDonald's. But, but when you go multiple months with, without having any soda, something happens the, the first sip of soda that you have afterwards. It, it's just oddly thick. It, it, it just doesn't taste right. It, it just seems gross. And I, I want to tell you that, that you can overcome that. It, it can taste good again. But why do you want to do that? I, I want to tell you sometimes it's just the easy thing. Also, when, when you begin to exercise and to get in shape, there's, there's a difficulty that's there. You're sore, and you might be sore all day. But if you can push through that, I, I want you to know that, that as much as bad habits are hard to break, good habits are also hard to break. And God wants to, to work in your life. Listen, here's what we find Paul saying to, to those in Philippi, this is, 
Philippians chapter 1, starting in verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Listen, part of what we need to, to really do is to, to pray that God will make a difference in you and in me. And, and, and when there's a transformation, when there's this dramatic difference, there will be an impact in our community and we will change the world. But I want you to know, it won't be like Chip Foose on overhauling and, and he's gonna go uh, take your vehicle and all the work is gonna be done without your knowledge and there's gonna be a complete transformation. What you need to know is that that when we are transformed, people will notice, but it's going to take some pruning. It's going to take some intention. And, and I'm just going to challenge you to begin praying, God, will you make a difference in this world? And will you start with me? God, will you do the work in me? Will you allow your spirit to, to work in me? And just that you would faithfully follow the, the directives that he gives you. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you, God, for the way that you move and work in our life. God, I thank you that you care for us more than we could even imagine. And Father, we want to trust you with everything. Father, we want to trust that, that when you give us something, that it's for our good. Or when something's not provided, it, it, it's still okay for us. God, help us to, to allow you to, to prune us in a way that won't just make a difference for us, but that will make a difference for your kingdom. Father, we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, I was spending some time just thinking about, about this service and, and just our everything that's going on in our world, the reason why we're recording church from home. And, uh, and I just found myself thinking about this question, which is, man, how can we trust God? How can we find a way to trust him in the midst of everything that's happening? Some of us may be trying to blame him for, for this, this occurrence, but we can also see this as an opportunity so I just want to take a moment to just hear encouragement from, from David from the Psalms. I just want to read this to you t this morning and you can close your eyes. Just listen as I read. We'll read through and we'll continue on singing. Let's just hear this encouragement today. Let's just take it in. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their host. He gathers the water of the, of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to be, he commanded and it stood firm. God is in control. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all his children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. 
He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. A war horse is false hope for salvation. And by its great might, it cannot rescue. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. Amen. On those whose hope is his steadfast love. That he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him. Because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us even as we hope in you. That's a good word this morning. For we can trust in our God. He made everything and we can trust him. No matter what happens in this world, we know the creator. We know that there's someone with us. He's with us through it all. Let's sing. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning Oh, I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me, there is another in the waters, holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. There is another in the fire. dead left for dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore and should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning either way I won't bow to the things of this world never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding what power set me free? There is a grave that holds nobody. The power lives in me There is another in the fire Oh, there is another in the fire Oh, there is another in the fire between where it's been I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in nothing stands between us nothing stands between us 
There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. As the darkness bows to Him, I can hear the roar in the heavens. As the space between waves thin, I can feel the ground shake beneath us. As the prison walls came in, nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between. There'll be another in the fire. Standing next to me. Gathering the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding? How good you've been to me? I count the joy come every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. There'll be another in the fire. Standing next to me. There'll be another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding How could you've been to me? I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree let's sing that again church I cast my mind to Calvary Where Jesus bled and died for me I see His wounds, His hands, His feet My Savior of that cursed tree
right now. Church, we're excited that you were able to, to join us in this way. There are a couple of things that, that we just want to encourage you to do. One of those is, is this is Palm Sunday. This is a time when uh, people were celebrating and, and excited about who Jesus is. And it, at some level, there wasn't a whole lot of depth to their relationship with him. We want to continue to, to pray and ask God to, to deepen our relationship, that he would continue to work in our life and to change us. In, in part, that, that's going to look like the Spirit working in our life. It'll show up in love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Those are some things that, some characteristics and qualities that it'll actually transform our life. It'll help us impact our community and, and, and really change the world. And so I would encourage you just to have the, the courage and the boldness to say, God, I want to change the world and will you start with me? I just want to tell you that that, that prayer will, will be powerful and effective, that, that God really will do that. Uh, I also want to encourage you to, to share this link and the upcoming link as we move towards Easter and, and, and really that hope that we have uh, of, of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. I think it's going to be a wonderful time. Again, thank you for, for joining us in this way. We, we look forward to the time that we can gather again. But until then, we hope you're well. We're praying for you, and we miss you. <laughs>